The American company Lockheed has more than 100 years of history innovating in the aerospace military industry. Among its most notable designs are the S-71 Blackbird, the world's fastest manned aircraft, as well as the modern fifth-generation fighters F-22 Raptor and F-35 Lightning II. However, the company has also sought to distinguish itself over the years in the commercial aviation sector, and that's how we come to the striking concept that emerged in the 1980s with the title of Lockheed Transport Ringwing. This is a passenger aircraft that used a ring-shaped wing design, meaning that both ends of the aircraft joined above the fuselage to create a circle. In this new video from Military Aviation, we will learn more about this type of design and the history of Lockheed's venture into it. To begin, it's better to delve into the intriguing concept of a ring wing and the origins of Lockheed's idea for their passenger aircraft. When we talk about a closed wing, there are no tricks in its name, as it indeed refers to when the two main wings typically found on aircraft come together at their ends, eliminating conventional wingtips. These designs include the ring wing, which was adopted by the transport ring wing. However, this is not the first example, as in 1906, Louis Bleriot and Gabriel Voisin had adopted this concept for the creation of the Bleriot III. The aircraft was built with a lifting surface consisting of two tandem-mounted ring wings, while years later, the Bleriot IV replaced the front ring wing with a biplane and added a canard fourplane to turn it into a three-surface aircraft. While it was able to leave the ground in short hops, it couldn't avoid suffering irreparable damage without achieving the expected success. Nevertheless, the idea was not a complete failure. Cedric Lee and G. E. Tillman Richards took over to build and fly several ring-wing aircraft in which the front and rear segments were at the same level. The first was a biplane, and they continued with a series of monoplanes that remained in use until 1914. Further in time, World War II saw the work of the German designer Ernst Heinkel, who began working on a versatile single-seat ring-wing aircraft called the Lurk. The goal was to have an aircraft that could take off and land vertically, but the project was soon abandoned as unfeasible. In the post-war era, the French company Snecma developed the Coleoptera with the same idea of having a single-seat ring-wing aircraft for vertical takeoff to eliminate the need for a runway. In this case, it proved to be dangerously unstable despite the development and testing of several prototypes, and again, it was a design that was abandoned. Now, we arrive in the 1980s, and a giant like Lockheed brings the concept back to the discussion table. The company needed a new design idea to compete with MD and Boeing for the title of the world's best commercial aircraft manufacturer. With that goal in mind, they approached aerospace engineer Rollo Gordon Smethers Jr., known for his innovation in envisioning the aircraft of the future. Soon, the combination of these elements bore fruit. The Lockheed Transport Ring Wing is a unique aircraft with circular wings that form a perfect circle around the fuselage. The aircraft was 52 meters long with a wing circumference of 7.4 meters. The wing was designed as a mid-length accessory on the sides of the aircraft before curving upward and backward 27 degrees to join the tail at the top. This uniqueness also made it stand out in terms of the total height of the aircraft, as despite having a low fuselage, it reached 23 meters. That posed a logistical challenge because it wouldn't fit in the hangars where this type of aircraft is typically stored. On the other hand, beyond its eye-catching exterior design, the interior was configured similarly to other competing aircraft like the Airbus A320 or Boeing 737, with a capacity for 120 passengers. At this point, aesthetics are undoubtedly a significant factor of innovation, but what really mattered in Lockheed's idea to compete were the benefits that this unique aircraft could bring during flight. Because a ring-wing aircraft lacks real wingtips, the vortices and downwash they generate are completely eliminated. This concept achieves more lift, resulting in the need for shorter runways to operate, lower fuel consumption, and immunity to crosswinds. Thus, its efficient design made the transport ring wing a perfect choice for short-distance trips that don't reach high altitudes, such as routes from New York to Boston or London to Manchester.
So, if this aircraft generated more lift, lower fuel consumption, and was touted as the future of aeronautical design for being more efficient than others, why did the circular wing aircraft never see the light of day? The truth is that it's not certain if any airline seriously considered the possibility of adopting this intriguing concept and bringing it to reality. However, what is certain is that the ring wing never went beyond wind tunnel tests. This is because a closed wing system has several significant disadvantages, despite its important advantages. The first drawback of this concept is that it experiences higher parasitic drag, which is produced by all those parts of the aircraft that do not contribute to lift. In this case, the weight of having another complete wing on top only adds to the need for more fuel. Furthermore, the design requires careful work to avoid issues like flutter and boundary layer separation, aerodynamic concepts of these large vessels that can jeopardize flight. There is also something called wing twisting, where it can be noted that in traditional aircraft, the wing is not flat but slightly twists away from the fuselage, specifically for the angle of attack. Because of all this, simply performing basic turns would result in a fuel consumption that completely cancels out the savings achieved by other factors. Finally, a significant factor to consider is money. Designing a joined wing aircraft requires strong interaction between different disciplines, such as structure and aerodynamics. This undoubtedly represents a challenge and new difficulties for the team that normally handles designs. They must work with engineering specialists who can optimize certain parts of the new concept that do not have the maturity of conventional aircraft, further increasing costs. It's logical that, when weighing all of this, the customer would choose an established manufacturer with a tried and true, traditional design over a risky, expensive, completely new, and different product. In this way, the aircraft of the future remained in the past, and while the concept may resurface with advances in new ways of working and new technologies, we can say that, at least for the moment, there is no possibility of looking up at the sky and seeing a ring wing. Now, it's time to say goodbye. Thank you very much for joining us until the end. And stay tuned to our channel to reconnect in the next video.